Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So the next question is that uh, where we do the lapping in the column. We understood for the beams, right? Now again, where do we do it for the column? Again, the answer remains the same. Wherever the bending moment is minimum, we are supposed to do the lapping there. So for columns, the lapping will be done at the center zone. That means the center zone in the sense uh, it's a middle middle zone in the column where the bending moment is less. Okay. So at center, the bending moment will be less. So we lap it here. So to put it in a better way, I'll explain you here once. So let us consider I'm drawing one column here. So let us consider this is a column what I have. Okay. And what I'm going to do is uh, let us say over the beam. And we'll consider this to be a beam. Okay. A plinth beam. Okay. So this is a plinth beam what I have. Uh, wait. This is a plinth beam what I have over the plinth beam, the column will come and next what I have next, I have a beam. This is my roof roof level beam. Okay. This is my roof level beam. This is my roof level beam and uh, oh, shall I do it in this way? It's okay. I'll do in this. So this is my roof level beam and over the roof level, what will happen? Your slab is going to come, isn't it? I'll draw the slab also. So slab. It will be hardly you know 150 mm thickness thick slab, isn't it? So let me do this is my slab thickness, isn't it? Good. Now, where you do the lapping of the column rebar. So always what happens is that we have a flow to flow, right? What is flow to flow, right? From the top of this plinth beam, okay, or from the top of this. Yeah. So Okay, I'll redraw it again. Okay, there was some issue. I'll quickly redraw. Okay, let us say this is column, and uh, then there is a beam. This is my plinth beam. Okay, and then I have a roof beam. This is my roof beam, and over the roof beam, what will happen? I mean, it is a slab portion. This much is my slab portion got it yeah now where you are going to do the uh, lapping for this particular column so usually we have something called as flow to flow right isn't it so what is the flow right from one from the top of the slab to the top of the another slab we call it as a flow to flow right okay so let us say from here to here this is a flow to flow right but my column will go only till the beam bottom you can see this is my beam bottom my column will be gone only up to here and my column will start from the top of this that is either you can call it as a slab top or you can call it as a if here I have taken it as a beam one and the same. Now, if I ask you to plot the bending moment diagram of a column, how will we, how will the bending moment diagram of a column look? I'll do it here. I'll do it here itself. Okay. Yeah, this will be nice. See, so the typical bending moment diagram of a column will be near the support that this is a support, right? Here we have maximum bending moment. Here also we have maximum bending moment. Okay. And bending moment will become minimum in this portion. That is, this is how the bending moment variation will happen. Now you can see this one portion. So can I, yeah. Can you see this middle portion? What has happened in the middle portion? Your bending moment is almost close to zero. See, this is, this bending moment is maximum here near the bottom near the top of your bending moment is maximum. But by the time you come towards the center portion, you see how it is coming. It is coming here, coming, coming, finally it has reached to zero. So this is that particular zone where the bending moment is minimum. And wherever the bending moment is minimum, we have to do the lapping. So where, where exactly this uh, uh, minimum bending moment is coming. So if this is a complete height of my column, exactly at the center it's coming. So I, I can call it as a center zone. So for columns, lapping will be done at the center zone. Very simple explanation. I've explained you the uh, bending moment diagram. I can do one more thing. I'll quickly make it uh, dark in color so that you get a better idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maximum. And this portion it is. Yeah. Got it. This is how the bending moment variation is going to happen. All right. So this particular portion you have uh, bending moment is zero or we can say bending moment is minimum there. I'm going to do the lapping. Now with this understanding, I'll take you to few of the structural drawing. 
I'll take you to one of the drawing here. See, uh, when you work as a site engineer, uh, you get or uh, when you work as a site engineer, you get certain a uh, typical drawing. Okay. And they are going to mention where you have to do the lapping, where you should not do the lapping. Now, whatever concept I've explained you, you see the same application being done here also. Again, you can see this is a top of a floor and this is a bottom of a beam. Okay. This is beam bottom, beam bottom, this much portion, and this is top of the floor. Now you can see they have written something. You can see a kind of, uh, I mean, you see here in the middle portion, you can see splice zone splice in the sense I told you about lapping. So you can do the lapping in the center portion. How exactly it is center? See, this is the height what I wanted from here. So this is the height what I have, isn't it? Now, what is exactly the center? Can I call this is my center of a, this is center portion. Exactly at the center, you can see the lapping has been done. See here, the lapping has been done and it's written here splice zone. Okay. Yeah. That's it. So that is the main thing what you're supposed to understand. If somebody asks you where you're going to do the lapping in the column, we are going to do the lapping in the column at the center. The reason behind that is the bending moment is minimum there, right? That is why we do. You can even plot the bending moment diagram, which I have taught you, and you can explain it in a more better way. But here, what has happened here? We don't do the lapping and here also we don't do the lapping. Why? Because there the bending moment is maximum. If you want, I'll quickly do it for you again. So here the bending moment is maximum. If this is a column. Okay. In this portion, the bending moment will be maximum. Here also it is maximum. And if I try to draw a line there, right? So maximum, this is maximum here also it is maximum, but here it is almost close to zero or you can call it as a minimum. So we do the lapping here, right? So I hope up to your concepts are clear. So that is why they have written all the things in this way. They have shown it. Okay. They've shown it where you have to do it's written splice zone. Okay. Right. I'll show you one more drawing for a better understanding. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it here also. Uh, it's not mentioned that you have to do, but actually the lapping will be done here. Okay. This is your floor height. Okay. And up to here, you don't do that up to here. You don't do that in the middle portion. You do the lapping. I'll show you one more drawing there. It is clear. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see it here. You can see what the, what is mentioned here LD that is this much lapping. I told you about the lap length, right? It has to be minimum development length. You can see it here LD they have written. So LD in the sense it's a development length, but they have shown it for the lapping, right? So LD they have written minimum LD you have to do. And you can see where the lapping has been shown. The lapping has been shown here, right? And where was that exactly? See, this is your floor beam. This is the top of your beam. Okay. TOB stands for top of the beam from the top of the beam to the bottom floor beam. No, this is your floor beam. Yeah, this is your floor beam. Okay. Now, where is the center portion? If this is the height, where is your center portion? The center portion is somewhere here. This is my center portion, right? So I have to do the lapping in the center portion. Got it almost. I'll do it here. Your center portion lies somewhere here. Okay. This much is your center portion. And you can see the lapping shown here. You can do the lapping here. And you can do the lapping here. Okay. Within the center, you have to do the lapping. Got it. So that is how you're supposed to understand the structural drawings. And that is a concept of, uh, this one. And here also you can see, see again, same thing you can see in this also, you can see the lapping has been shown here. The lapping has been shown here. Okay. Why is that the lapping? They have shown it here, here and here. So we know one more thing at one particular junction, more than 50%, we cannot do the lapping. That means, okay. I'll explain that also. Let us say I have eight diameter. Uh, I'll explain here itself. Let us say you have a column. You have eight uh, longitudinal rebar in a column. So all the eight rebar, you are not going to do the lapping at this point only. All eight you are not going to do. Out of that, that means the code says that fifty percent only you have to do. What is fifty percent of eight number of bar? Four number of bar. So four number of bar you are going to do the lapping here. Another four number of bar you are going to do the lapping here. So that is called a staggered staggered lapping 
you cannot lap at one single portion one one lap yeah i'll put it here see this four rebar okay these are my four rebar this four rebar i'm going to lap at this portion another four rebar i'm going to lap at this portion got it but it will lap in the center portion only because when i say center it's not a very small distance if i have a let us say i'll put it in a better way see this is the height what i have consider this height to be uh 10 meter 10 meter then what will be this height and this height so you have to divide it by three uh, simple uh, raw formula i'm giving you divide it by three so this much portion uh, not divided by uh, three divided by four h by four h by four comes out to be how much 2.5 2.2.5 meter so from here 2.5 meter right from here your 2.5 meter is gone from here your 2.5 meter is gone how much is left out 2.5 2.5 5 is gone another 5 is left out so that 5 meter is your middle portion this middle portion what you have this middle portion what you have no this is 5 meter so within this 5 meter you have to do the lapping so within 5 meter what i'm going to do a uh, few lapping i'm going to do here four rebars lapping i'm going to do here another four rebars lapping i'm going to do it here got it so this is a launch this is a front view you're seeing so that is how it looks but practically four rebars will be lapped here and after here certain distance will you actually the code says it has to be 1.3 times the lap length and then another four rebar i'm going to lap in this way so in this way what we can do we are not lapping more than 50 percent of the bar even in the beam also same concept applies in the beam if i have four rebar all the four bar i'll not lap at one portion two i'll lap here another two i'm going to take it to the other side i'm going to lap it right so beam i forgot to explain you then again you see let us see if this is my beam i'll delete everything if this is my beam okay so i have four uh, bar okay then what i'm going to do i'll lap two rebar here two rebar i'm going to lap here i'm going to lap here okay and now let us say in the bottom portion also you are supposed to leave the bar so next bar i won't stop here okay you getting my point i won't stop here and then i don't lap something like this why is that because again at one particular junction see at this particular junction at this particular junction both the bar you are lapped at the same portion you should not do only 50 percent has to be done if there are four bars two i am going to lap it here two in the sense this is not two see you are seeing it from the front side behind this also there is another two bar okay yeah so what i do instead of adopting this method i'll run this bar completely so based on that only you have to cut the rebar okay on the side i'll take it here okay now it is somewhere here and also then yeah i'm going to lap it here now what has happened i've done the lapping yes i've done the lapping is it more than 50 percent no because in this portion i have lapped it here this is for the beams okay in this portion i have lapped it here whereas here i don't have any lapping so more than 50 percent has not happened here i've done the lapping whereas in this portion there is no lapping so not more than 50 percent has happened so this is how you do in the beam right i hope up to here your concepts are clear we understood for the beam we understood for the column column is very simple at the center of a column you have to lap it done and dusted right yeah so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you